This episode is sponsored by MMS, Missionary Music School. Changing lives one note at a time. Go to mmsforeveryone.com. My name is Porfirio Gueiros, and you're listening to Think and Play. I invited a few of my students, which I call friends, to talk about music. What made that song so special, and what made that song different, and what that song influenced in their lives. If you like music like me, if you're a music enthusiast, this is the podcast for you. So enjoy, have a seat, and let's think about music. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is me again, Porfirio Paul Guerrero, and I'm again in my favorite spot. I always come here for my podcast and to think about life, because it's nice and quiet. Just for you to know, I'm standing right next to Boeing Painfield, which is Boeing factory in Washington. And I always come here because, well, it's peaceful. And I see all these airplanes like coming out of the factory, getting ready to be painted. I'm gonna take a picture and show you guys what what's my view right now. I see a lot of 787 uh, green. So green means that they need they're brand new, so they need to go to the painting. So they after this they go to the whatever company bought them and then painted, being painted, being customized. So every time. I come here, I, I feel the grace of God over my life, over my family, because it was just because God chose us to live here, to, to come to America from Brazil, because He had a purpose. And today, I'm thinking about this, this song by Eric Clapton, it's called Change the World. If I could change the world, this, this is the question that I'm, I'm asking and I want you to think about it. What would you do if you could change the world? God shows up and says, hey, I'm going to give you one simple thing that you, you can do that you can change the world. And it, it's funny that I feel that I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. Who am I? Just born in Brazil, I live in America for 13 years and I'm a Christian guy, go to church, have my family, have my wife, my two kids, so now I have a granddaughter and a, a daughter-in-law, Dina, and baby James coming this Monday, so we're excited for that. So the family is growing, so this is one, God gave me a family to say, hey, you can do, you can change the world through your family. That's, that's what he told us like 33 years ago when he got married. As for me, as my household, I will serve the Lord. This, this was the, the, the main verse that me, Anya and I, we decided to follow. And we just follow that dream. We just follow that thought, that idea. And we're expecting that God would open up the doors for us and help us and provide for us. And, well, 30, 33 years later, many things happen, good things and bad things. And here we are in America, uh, still doing the same thing that we started doing 33 years ago. A little bit more because me and my wife, you, you, we've been with music since... I, my story with music is funny. Uh, my family is not a music, music family. Uh, they were like back on the 40s and 50s. But the problem is that they, 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 they play the accordion and they play in, in parties. But the problem, they, they were not Christian back then. So uh, my great-grandfather, uh, his father was not a Christian. And my great-grandfather, 
I don't know he, if he played, but his brothers and, and cousins, they played in parties. And the, the issue was uh, party, music, and fights. They were all connected. So if we invited the Gators family for a party, two things would happen. Lots of music, lots of fun, lots of the, the four things. Lots of fun, lots of alcohol, and fights. So in the, at the end of the party, everybody was fighting because it was fun to, it was, it was a fun thing to do, to just fight. Anyway, when my, my, my great, great, great grandfather became Christian, he says, okay, no more parties, no more alcohol, no more music. And then my grandfather, he was born, he, he was raised into this non-musical environment because music and party were connected. Uh, he became a pastor and in, at his church it was only music, was just old hymns uh, and an organ sounding. So no, no piano, no acoustic guitar because this was supposed to be like non-Christian or world instruments. Like instruments used for bohemian, for alcohol, for parties. So this, this is where I was born. This way I was born. My father, in my father's house, he wasn't very, a very big deal with radio. We didn't have record players in the beginning. The radio was only to listen to, mu to, uh, to news and some games or, or whatever, but music, nah, music was like, oh, this is noisy, boom, and he would change the, 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 the radio station. My mother, in the other hand, she was born in, into a, her father was very musical. They had like, like sessions of music. My, my, I didn't know that, but I learned that when I was 12, 13 years old. Uh, and my, uh, my, my mother's father, no, my grandfather. I didn't. I didn't meet him because he died and he was really young. Uh, whatever accident happened to him, but he was into music. The first record player in in the city of João Pessoa, which is the northeast of Brazil, uh, he bought it and it was this big deal in the city because he was the first person who had a gramophone with record players and they could listen to to Ray Charles and and all these old goodies guys. So my mother, when we, when, well, I was, I think I was like, like four or five years old. I heard my, my first record, like Ray Charles or Tony Bennett. I don't know, I don't know who it was. It was a jazzy, jazzy album. And that, that, that music was like hidden from my father. We could listen at home, of course. But my father, every single time my father would come in, eh, turn off that noise. This is noise. Yeah, I don't like music. It was nothing very good for him so it was a bad feeling I don't know why anyway so when we went we went to this uh, vacation in a, in a uh, like a relative house and and this this I think it was my dad's cousin so they had a piano as an airplane coming <laughs> it's flying over so they had the piano in at this this uh, cousin's house so all my siblings, they were outside and playing and going to the beach and playing soccer. And I, me, I would stay inside the house and play the piano. And then I would listen to this, those, those kids. I think it was like six or, or seven years old. I would listen to the songs on, on, a, on a kids program like Sesame Street or whatever. And I would go to the piano. It was so, by year, I would play the, 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 the song on the piano. And my mother said, oh, you got, you got, you got a good year for music. And then whatever she was like, or, or singing or humming, I, I would go to the piano and try to find the song. So we went back from this vacation, so she realized I had the, 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 the calling or the gift for, for, you know, listening to music and playing on the piano, trying to figure out the melody. Uh, when I turned eight years old, she enrolled me in a piano teacher. She asked me, do you want to go for piano? Said, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go for the piano. So my dad didn't know that because he was against. So when my mother told him, say, I'm going to enroll him in a, in a, in a, in a piano uh, classes. My dad said, no, 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 no. Piano is not for girls. Oh, so it's not for boys. Piano is a girl instrument. And music's from the devil. So what the heck? 
anyway, so because all the girls they would teach piano or play the piano, so, and he said, I don't want this piano player in my house, blah blah blah. So anyway, my mom, she she did not listen to my dad. I have to confess that, and she enrolled me in, the, in, in this piano teacher, and she didn't tell my dad for I think four years. No, two years at least, I was going to the piano classes without my dad though. So we didn't have a piano, we didn't have nothing. I just, I would go uh, uh, earlier to the, 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 the piano teacher and then I'm practicing the piano. But I was so lazy to read because it was so hard on me to, to read music because my ears were, were really musical and good. So I would ask my teacher to play the song and I'll memorize the melody and then right after I would play the melody of the song. Anyway, so I cheated a lot. My, my, my. So anyway. Uh, my mother bought a piano and put in my dad's uh, because we had a school back in Brazil. So it, she put a piano there, and then I started practicing my piano in at my dad's school. So it, it was my dad's school. It was okay for me to play. There was nobody around me. I would practice only in, in times that there was no public or nobody. I was really like shy. And one night uh, we had a recital. And uh, I had a song that I was supposed to play. My dad was there, he opened it because we had a piano, we had lots of students, well, in the school. So my piano teachers had like 20, 25 students, and so it was 25 songs presentation. So the whole family was there. It was good because we were like bringing people in, into the school. My dad was happy because it was bringing people, new people to, to check on the school. He was doing his advertisements anyway. So my dad was always this business guy. And then at, by his surprise, I jumped into, and they call up my name and I jumped into the piano and I played a song. And then my dad said, I didn't know he played a piano. And, <laughs> and my mom said, yeah. He's been playing for two years and then she confessed. And, but it's okay, if, it's, if he's playing at the school, I don't want him to play in parties and get crazy. So at the school, it was fine, it was good. It was, it was like a, it was a cultural thing. It was like, I, I was like teaching and showing people what, what I was learning. Okay, anyway. Uh, I turned 12 and then my, my, my calling for music was getting bigger and bigger. And I started asking questions. Why, why uh, God gave me this thing for music and I cannot use it? I, I, it, I just have to hide it. And my, my, I asked permission, well, my, my mother said, no, he, he's good at music, let's put him ahead. And, and my dad said, no, 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 music's bad, music's not good, music's this, this, this. And then, uh, I remember that I had promised my dad, and I asked him, dad, why, why music so bad? Why is it a sin? Why is it sinful? Why is it? And he, he never told me this story about my, my great grand, you know, my ancestors, about the, the drinking and the party that they had. Uh, and my dad says, no, it's just sin, it's just bad. It's something that we have to control because music will lead you to bad stuff. And then my question was why? Why God put something that it's so powerful inside of me and it's so bad? And I, I, I promised my dad that I would only play, I would never play in public. I'll, ju I'll just play for myself. And he said, okay, so you, if you're only playing for yourself, fine, I will allow you to play. So I, pro I was like 12 years old. And then jumping ahead, I had everything. I could buy instruments, I could buy equipment, I could, but inside my house, inside my room. So I had a, a huge, I had a studio in my own room. I have like five, six thousand watts of whatever sound in my room, never outside, never in public. Even playing church, nope, I would never play in church because I promised my dad I would never play in public. So this was my promise. I broke my promise, I think, three times in my life because I had friends, oh, you play the piano, you play the da 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 da. So we have a band, we want to do this. I said, no, I don't play in public. So three times, there was no piano player, no, no, whatever, they need a keyboard player. And then we went to play in a bar. And I was so scared, so afraid. And this was the first time that I had to get drunk to play. And I realized that 
when I, when I was drunk, I wasn't afraid of playing. So, and this was a very bad route to go. It was the same route as my ancestors. So I, I would repeat the same, like, curse. And I said, no, I don't like to do that. I'm disobeying my father and I have to be drunk to play, this, to do something. I like it, but I don't like to play drunk and I don't like to play for drunk people. This was my, my drunk people is horrible. They, they yell at you, they scream, they want to eh, blah, 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 and start doing crazy stuff. So it's horrible. So I said, so I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to do this anymore. When I got married in 20, uh, 1991, 1992, me and Anya, Anya, well, she came to, to my hometown, we lived in the same apartment. I had a whole studio in my room. I had all instruments, bass, drums, uh, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keyboards. I had everything. And then my wife says, why, why don't we start a band? We have a church, we have a need, you have the, all the equipment. And I told her, I don't play in public. I said, why do you play in public? I said, well, I promised my dad when I was 12 years old, and now I'm 23. I was 12 years old, and I don't play in public. And she said, but what the heck, why not? It's because music will lead me to alcohol. Music is bad. I said, no, God created music. And then I said, but we don't have that kind of music in the church. And so, well, we can... We, Talk, let's talk to the pastor and let's create a space for the kind of music that you like and I like. And she showed me these songs that she liked. There was a, a big band at, at, the, at the time called Vencedores por Cristo. So they had like beautiful songs, like modern songs. And then, oh, this is cool. This is, this is, this is a nice Christian band. That, that, is that Christian band? So that's when I learned about uh, Michael W. Smith and, and uh, there was a, a, a bunch of... of uh, of these guys back in the 90s, Emmy uh, Grant, and said, wow, this, play, this guy they play good music. And because I was to old hymns and, and all those like slow songs, and I liked the, the, the upbeat song. So 1991, we, I was listening to like Guns N' Roses and, and, and Yes and Rush. This is Led Zeppelin. This, this, this were my, my bands that I, I, I got inspired by. And I wanted to play Christian songs, but using the same tools as, as it's a tool, it's a communication tool. Why do I need to keep, keep, keep using organ sounds if I have a keyboard that where you have electric guitar sound or bass sound? Anyway, so long story short, uh, the pastor at the time was, was uh, well, they opened up a, a, a youth minister for, for us. And this youth ministry, at the Presbyterian Church, so it was very traditional. But on a Saturday, we could we could take you know drum set, bass, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, whatever instrument, and play like modern songs on a Saturday night for the youth ministry. And what was funny that like two or three years later, the youth ministry was like like like, like crowded, like a hundred, hundred and fifty kids like coming every single Saturday. And the pastor says, "What are you doing?" They're not coming to the church service, but they're coming to, to the youth service. Thank God, because youth service, we praise, we, we, we teach, we preach, we praise. So they listen to the, to, to, to the Bible, they, they have fun, they, they can relate, they, they, they get the feeling of, of, of belonging to something bigger than themselves. And so this, this one was, I was starting to get that feel. Oh, by the way, there's a story before that. Before we start the program, and I told Anya, I have to go back to my dad and ask him permission if I'm allowed to play in public. So I did that before we start up. Before we start, there was two cars coming here. Before we started the, 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 the youth pro program, uh, I went to my dad's and said, hey dad, this is what you were doing, trying, you were planning to do this, 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 this. So I says, why are you telling me this? I says, because I promised you when I was 12 years old that I would never play in public. And now I'm asking for permission to play, to play in public. And so are you playing in the church? Yeah, it's for the church. So I don't remember that I made you that promise. And it's, I promised you when I was 12 years old that I would never play in public. And now I'm going to start playing in public. And it says, no, 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 okay, I'm sorry. 
God bless you. Go play in public. Go serve God through your music. Because I know this is your calling. You love this. And that's it. So, I still had to ask his blessing. And for, for 10 years of my life, I was like secluded and conflicted and challenged myself. I said, why God put something so sinful inside of my heart? This desire, I, I, I was trying to control this de desire for like 11 years of my life. Anyway, but it was well worth it. But, okay, going back to the subject, how can I change the world? In 1991, I, Ernie and I, we felt that this calling, and the, the, the calling was very simple. If we can change, if, I, if, if music can change my life, well, not the music, but for good and bad, because music is communicating something, right? It's communicating a story. And if that story is a good story, so it talks about Jesus, talks about bi biblical principles, it's a good story. I can change, if, if that story, that message can change my heart, the opposite is always, the contrary is always, uh, it's, it's, again, the contrary is true too. It can change me for the bad stuff. So when I hear a song that is all about killing and destroying, and oh, I want to kill myself, I'm destroying myself, oh, uh, I'm worth nothing, I'm a loser, I'm a loser. So this, this will relate to your heart. So when you listen to good, positive stories or good, positive music, this will create in you a, a sense of, of strength. And okay, because it's all about the it's not about the rhythm, it's about the message. The message is what's important in a song. So how could we how could I and me and I and two person? How could we change the environment that we are, were in? So how could we change you know the the opportunity that that the pastor the pastor gave us with the youth? And then we, if we, I told Anya, if we have one guy here, awesome. If we have 10, awesome. If we have 20, awesome. So it didn't matter how many people we had. If we had, if Jesus was into that, that, that uh, message, we we're playing for Jesus. We were playing for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there. So it, we didn't, we didn't care if that's one or 10,000. We didn't care, to be honest. And in the beginning, it was really hard for me to play in public because I was raised not, I was trained not to play in public, just to play for myself. And in the beginning, it was so hard, so hard for me to say, to start playing the chords. I would like, like blank, boom, disappear. All the, the notes, the chords, or whatever arrangement, I got like so overwhelmed with information that I had to say, God, please help me. Because, hold on, is the truck coming? I had to pray to God, God, please help me. Give me wisdom, give me, give me strength, give me, calm my heart. Because my, my brain is like accelerated. So I need to calm my heart. So, and, and, and God was like changing me at this, it was working on me. And then, at the end of like two years, three years, we had like hundreds and hundreds of kids coming in and say, hey, thank you for using music to change my, my kids' lives. So, and then it, it, was, it was amazing. So the, the quote, the, whatever the message was, if I could change a, a kid, a teenager, I have to do it one note at a time. It's only one of, I'm only one simple drop. I'm a nobody in this 8 billion people in the world. So, but if God can use one to change one person, okay, this is, this is all you can do. Just changing one person. First of all, you have to change yourself. You have to, ha you have to allow God to change yourself and say, God, use me. So when I when I was thinking about what song would I would I use, I chose Eric Clapton, of course, one of my favorite, the greatest. Uh, for me, it was like this: like God, Jesus, uh, Eric Clapton. <laughs> Third place, Eric Clapton, because 
of the way he sings, the little mess that he plays, the suffering had be, he had been through, all the drugs, all the alcohol, and he's still alive, and he's still performing, and he lost a kid. And the songs ex inspire me how to be a better musician. His song inspires me how to, how to get greater on the play. And, and it's funny that he used the same scales and the same chords that I use. But why does he, he sound so different? So this is the deal. Uh, how can I change? I, I told God, God, use me to change me first and help be a vessel, be an instrument to change people's lives around me, whoever is next to me. So we live in a world that's like 8 billion people. So who am I? I'm a nobody. I'm one out of 8 billion. So technically, I cannot change anything. But God with me, He can change everything. He is the source. He is the power. He has the control of changing whoever I come by and I say, hey, let's play together. Let's harmonize. So this song by Eric Clapton, it's, it's beautiful because the question is, what would you do if you could change the world? What would you do? Uh, if I could reach the star, I'll put down one star for you. So if I, oh, there's a, another plane coming. Shining on my heart so you could see the truth. The truth, yeah, beautiful. There's an airplane, yeah. Then this love I have inside, it's everything it seems. But for now, I found it's only in my dreams. So we, if we have a dream to, to change the world, ask God. And God will provide the resources. God will provide everything. All you need is faith. When, 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 when the Bible says that if you have faith, you can move this mountain, tell this mountain to go from here and go to the sea, and the mountain will go. We just have to believe that we can change the world. It's not us, it's not me, it's not my power, it's God's power. And it's it's amazing how when I sit here and I look, I'm in pain field right now, uh, and I look around and say, God, you brought us, you brought my family here to change the world. So you've been changing the world since I was born. So keep on changing until I die. And I know you're gonna keep on changing after I die because this is, this is how you work. You want people to be better. You want people to get closer and closer and closer to Jesus. If I could be a king at least one day, can you imagine that if you could be a king for one day? What would you do? Oh, Eric Levin say to his wife, oh, I'll take you as my queen and have it no other way. And our, our love will rule this kingdom we made. Till, I'll be a no, till then, I'll be a fool wishing for that day that I could change the world. I would be the sunlight of the universe. You would, you would think our love is really something good. Baby, if I could, if I could, if I could change the world. I would change the world for you. I would, that's what Jesus did to us. He became a human. He became a nobody. This guy with all the power in the world, he was the, the, the word, he is the word, and he became flesh. And he became like this, one drop out of, at the time, like one million people in the world. And he, he became this life-changing guy. So one drop, and he changed like 12. He multiplied his life with 12 people. And these 12 people multiply, right? And then it goes, it goes. We have like three, I don't know, three billion Christians in the world today. But just because of this one guy called Jesus Christ. So, this is my message today. And, and it was when I was reading the soap the other day. And it was, what is it, Matthew? No, Luke 22. Jesus said, you meet a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him. It was a man doing a, a, a woman's job. Man didn't, didn't carry a jar of water, so he was being useful. Maybe he was helping his wife doing her job at the time. And then God, Jesus said, you're gonna find this guy carrying a jar of water, follow him. So he opened the door for you 
and we're gonna have a party. We're gonna have a feast. We're gonna eat and drink at the, his house. And this will be my last supper. And after this, I'm gonna die and I'm gonna resurrect. So, but this guy carrying a jar of water changed the world. He was used to change the world. So I, I hope and pray that, that God uses me to change the world one note at a time. This is what I've been doing for the past 33 years and I hope I'm gonna be doing this for my next 33 years that I have in front of, ahead of me. If I could change the world one note at a time, that's all I'm doing. God bless you people. Let's hear Eric Clapton. I'm playing, I'm, I'm playing the piano on this song and I'll play acoustic guitar, so I'm, I'm doing everything. I love this song. I love this song. The chord variations. Let's go. Eric Clapton, If I Could Change the World. Oh, this is a live version. I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Love you both. Well, this is the best of Eric Clapton. It was released on 1999. By, to be honest, it was album was released on October 12, 1999. Wow, this is the best of him. Uh, this album included like, Change the World, My Father's Eyes, Tears in Heaven, Layla, all the uh, bad love, all the good songs, Eric Clapton songs. So this is one of my favorite. It's on E major. It has all this variation on this chord progression. Ah, it's beautiful. I like the hammer on. And Eric Clapton always, always coming in beautiful. Pleasure to play with Eric Clapton. Let's go. Jesus. If I can reach the stars. Let's go to A now. Back to E. Now we're going to change the world. Beautiful.
him. I like the explosion now. See sharp behind that? This is beautiful. This is amazing. Love Thank it. You. Thank you, Eric Clapton. All right. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Think and Play. If you have any questions, shoot us an email, thinkandplay2222 at gmail.com. Subscribe for more episodes. We're going to have lots of more to come. Peace out. Thank you, people. Bye. Love you.